In this video, we'll be covering the manufacturing, assembly, and testing of our thermal energy storage system prototype. I'm Mark Demacio, and I'll be going over the mechanical manufacturing. Haroon Sharma will be going over the electronics. Finally, I'll be going over the final assembly and prototype testing. The project began by getting 22 steel sheets shear cut to size. The plates had holes drilled in order to fit the copper heat transfer pipes. The plates were then welded to form three open lid tanks. A salt tank with four fins that added support for the heat pipes, a rock tank, and an insulation tank. The welded tanks then had slots cut into them for the flow and temperature sensor LCD panels, and the outermost tank was spray painted to protect it from outdoor weather conditions. The flex seal was sprayed on the welded joints of the salt tank to avoid any potential water or salt leakage. The salt tank was placed in the rock tank, which was then placed in the insulation tank, and the inlet outlet pipes were inserted and soldered. So next, Arun will explain the electronics portion of the project. Okay, so today I'm going to be demonstrating the, the, the enclosure for this circuit diagram for uh, the thermal energy storage system. So for this, uh, I'm going to be explaining each of the prototyping boards and their functionalities. Um, so as you can see here, this prototyping board right here, this is for the rock and salt enclosures. So this rock and salt enclosure right here is kind of hooked up to these LCD displays as well as these uh, temperature sensors. So these temperature sensors, they have unique addresses which are wired up through I2C bus. So the I2C bus is essentially a serial communication protocol. And um, and just for this particular board right here, all that's uh, wired up are just these two sensors as well as this these two displays. Um, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to have both of them on and uh, restart the program right here and have it connect. So uh, as you could see, they're all powering up right now. So it's going to start off with the rock, then salt, then it goes to these ones, then it goes to those ones. So this is just in the setup phase, it's initializing. So now I'm going to be talking about this enclosure right here. So th uh, this um, uh, prototyping board right here in the middle. So this board right here, this represents the cold uh, discharging state. So this cold discharging state is for these three these three displays, as well as these two sensors, as well as uh, this flow sensor right here. So these two are temperature sensors, and that's the the flow sensor. So now these three displays. So this one represents the cold water flow. This one represents the outlet, and this one represents the inlet. Uh, so these two are for temperatures, and this one is for the flow flow rate. Um, and uh, lastly, this particular prototyping board right here. This one represents the hot water for the charging state. So for this, this is wired up to uh, three LCD displays. So these three LCD displays right here, they represent um, the two temperatures and one flow reading. So these two temperature right here, one represents for hot, hot inlet and one for hot outlet. And this flow sensor right here is to measure the flow rate. And uh, this is all hooked up via an Arduino uh, AT Mega board. And this program is being run right now in a data acquisition software, uh, which is being recorded live. And so we get live data when we're doing the testing on the actual system. Um, and these uh, indication lights are wired up uh, to represent each of the cha uh, each of the phase. So this is for the charging state, um, and this is for the discharging state. So I can power off visually the LCDs. This conserves some power as I'm powering this all from uh, USB um, charging uh, port. And uh, this is uh, our uh, circuit enclosure for the thermal energy storage system. And this is uh, the display, how it looks up from top. So when we're in the charging state, we turn this off. And when we're in the discharging state, we turn that one off. And this is a reset button. So this reset button allows us to reset the program uh, when we're switching phases. Hey, it's Mark again. Finalizing the assembly process, the salt storage medium was added to the salt tank, followed by the rock bed added to the rock tank, and the insulation added to the insulation tank. Our testing assembly consisted of a pot of boiled water which was pumped into the heat transfer inlet pipe and fed back into the pot through the outlet pipe for an hour. So the heat from the water was transferred to the salt as it circulated through the copper pipes, which was then transferred to the rock bed. It was observed that the hot water left the unit at a much lower temperature than what was fed into the unit, and the salt in the rock storage mediums were increasing in temperature over time.
So the energy efficiency was 25%, which makes sense considering the low operating temperature of the fluid, which would maximize the entropy generated during the heat transfer process. So the energy efficiency would increase as the heat transfer fluid's operating temperature increased, especially if the salt reached a phase change state in which it became molten salt. 